I've started with the basic sketch of the jet and now I am covering the entire thing with just plain water. I do this on my first wash because then anytime I add any paint or color, it all is like a nice smooth um, transition. It, it creates nice smooth changes from one color to the next and no harsh lines. So I've got the entire thing wet with water and now I'm just dropping in some light blue mixed with a little bit of gray and a little bit of gold. The blue that I'm using is ultramarine blue and then a little bit of yellow ochre is the gold color and then a little bit of burnt sienna the burnt umber actually is the brown and the brown kind of tones down the blue a little bit and then the yellow kind of makes this blue green color i'm just looking for little sections on the plane that have a little bit of variation in color then i was blotting out places where i got a little bit too dark I'm going in with more of my ultramarine blue and my brown mixture um, to add a little bit of darks in. But I will go ahead and get a lot darker once all of this is dry. Now that my plane is completely dried, I'm gonna go ahead and add some background in. And the same thing goes with the background. I'm just getting an area wet and dropping in some color. I'm using a couple different blues for this, um, a cerulean blue, an impression blue, maybe even a little bit of cobalt blue. I'm kind of jumping back and forth between them. And I'm trying not to over blend. So I'm getting an area wet. I'm being really careful around the edges of my jet and then I'm dropping in the color and not brushing it too much because I like the variation in shades and colors in the background. It makes the sky a lot more interesting to look at. It's very tempting to go in with a brush and kind of over brush the area but don't do it. <laughs> keep it keep it more varied. You'll notice too I just painted over sections of the plane with the blue of the sky. Um, those sections are going to be darker anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. I'm going in and adding a little bit more rich darks into certain places. I'm especially looking for areas of the plane that are light that I want to pop out. And I'm going and adding darks right next to those places so that they will stand out from the sky. So now I'm going in and getting pretty detailed. I'm using a lot smaller of a brush and I'm going in with some of my rich darks right away to really outline the areas that I want to stand out. I am using a reference photo for this picture so I'm looking at my photo very carefully and trying to find out what um, parts are very dark. I'm looking at values a lot here. So I'm looking for the darkest darks and I'm trying to go through and kind of accentuate those as I work. Some of these areas I will end up going over again, so 
at least just getting a little bit of a darker section going like the front of the, the plane here just to get some of the shading going and then I will go in and, and darken some of the really dark areas yet again. So this is kind of a lot of drawing. I'm drawing in the, the different darks, trying to use my brush to find where they go and really using my eyes going back and forth from the picture that I'm looking at to the painting. The color that I'm using for the dark darks is actually still the blue and the brown mixed together. I'm not using black at all. I'd use the blue and the brown to get my darks because it's a little bit more vibrant or colorful than black would be. Black tends to be pretty dull. And the reason it's getting so dark is I'm not using a lot of water. So I, I am getting my brush a little bit wet, but then I'm going straight into the paint um, where if I want it to be lighter, I'll use a little bit more water mixed with my paint to get that fluid feel for the lighter shadows. All of the sections under the wing here and under the plane are, are a lot darker because they're in shadow, so I do want to make those nice and rich to give good contrast for the rest of the picture. While that section is still wet, I was adding a little bit more of dark to the edges. So as long as the area that you're working on is wet, you can kind of add a little bit of uh, shading or other colors or variety or dark to the area and it'll kind of blend or bleed into the section like you see there on the tail. If I wait till it's dry, it won't be a, as smooth of a transition. So while it's wet, I kind of like to drop in more darks or to highlight or accentuate some of the areas and make them look like some different shades or values. I'm now going in, now that everything is dry, I'm just going in and adding uh, some medium values. So this section of the plane is a little bit shaded, but not quite as dark as some of those darker areas. So I moved back up to a bigger brush and I'm just going in with kind of a wash to some of the areas of the plane that are not super bright, but then not super dark. So kind of the middle, middle ground. And I'm just kind of adding some details to those. Um, any yellow that you see is yellow ochre, which is kind of more of a golden color. Then I'm still using ultramarine blue as my main blue on the plane. And the plane really only has ultramarine blue, the burnt umber, and the yellow ochre. I'm also touching up some of the details to the sky. Any place on the plane that has light, 
I want it to really stand out so I'm going next to it with the sky color and I'm darkening it so that the light stands out a little bit more and giving a little bit more contrast to some of those areas like the wing otherwise it kind of gets lost removing the tape at the end. I tape it down so that the paper doesn't buckle too much. And then it also gives a really ni nice white crisp border, which I like to make it look like a finished painting.